question stands in the name of the Honourable Annette King. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question to the Minister of Social Development and Employment. What reports has she received on the performance of the Community MAC scheme? The Honourable Paula Bennett. Mr Speaker, I have received many reports on the success of the Community MAC programme. Um, and I'm going to quote just four quick ones. It would be good to find a way to keep similar programmes going. There's a real gap there that needs to be filled. The Community Max scheme that I visited in Thames demonstrated positive gains, gains for the community and individuals involved. A step in the right direction. Any initiative that creates opportunities for young people is to be welcomed. Mr Speaker, all of those quotes directly from opposition members. Thank you. The Honourable Annette King. Supplementary question, Mr. Speaker. Was one of those successful Community Max programmes in the Kaikoura electorate, where the National Member of Parliament, Colin King, claimed yesterday that 90% of the young people involved in that programme moved into full time work? If so, why did she refuse to listen to her colleague when he asked for it to continue and who said, quote, my argument with the Minister of Social Development fell flat? End quote. Would the funding be removed? And don't the young people in Mr King's electorate deserve the same support? The Honourable Paula Mr Bennett. Speaker, um, let me be quite clear that actually the member came to see me. He specifically asked for a meeting to talk to me about that, and I did listen. But Mr Speaker, yes, his request for a community max to continue in that area and to have additional, because of course nothing was cut, it simply was at the time and the money was up, um, did fall flat. Fall flat because, Mr. Speaker, to put it in comparison, we have 81 young Māori people on the unemployment benefit, not just for Blenheim, but for the Blenheim, Nelson, and the whole West Coast area. And as the member would be aware, we have about 21,000 throughout New Zealand, so we've got some other areas that are in more need. The Honourable Annette King. What checks have been put in place to ensure community max projects? using subsidised workers on short-term contracts don't undercut successful and legitimate existing businesses, putting them at risk of having to lay off permanent staff. The Honourable Paula Mr Bennett. Speaker, um, there is always some tension there, particularly when you're going into a programme, but as um, the member's own colleagues has identified, this has been incredibly uh, successful and has been very, very well received in communities. Um, there is some around contracts and as far as how do you make sure that they are community-based programmes, they are doing stuff that wouldn't normally be done. Certainly the reports that I've seen today have had positive results and it's been positive in that area. Heke Parata. Minister. Can the Minister comment on the impact government programmes like Community Max and Job Ops have had on youth unemployment? The Honourable Paula Bennett. Mr Speaker, the programmes are having an effect and in some areas it has been quite significant. For example, in the last seven weeks, the number of young people on the unemployment benefit in Auckland has reduced by 7%. And that may not sound like much, but when actually unemployment is going up in other areas and for other groups, that's incredibly positive and is the result of job ops and community maps in that project. The Honourable Annette King. What has her, been her response to Mike Tamaki? who operates the Tamaki Heritage Group in Christchurch, who wrote to her recently telling her that the Community Max program there had put at risk the employment of his employees, undercutting his successful business of 25 years. And how can she can claim that the Community Max is a great success if all the scheme does is to employ 10 young people for a short term, but throws 10 permanent loyal people onto the dole. The Honourable Speaker, Paula Bennett. Um, yes, I have seen that letter from Mr Tamaki. I suppose I would say that I think there is room for 10 extra young people in Christchurch to be doing cultural activities and to actually be uh, learning on the ground and doing it. And I think that there is room for that. And I'm going to encourage it. I mean, uh, so a few weeks ago, the scheme was the greatest thing and why weren't we extending it? And today it's not successful and it's the worst thing under Labor. So I can't quite think you made it work out sort of where you sort of stand on it as far as... Te ora of level. Kia ora koe, kia ora tato katoa. For the Minister, has she visited or received any visit uh, from young people enrolled on the Community Max scheme and what has been their experience of the programme? 
The Honourable Paula Bennett. Mr Speaker, actually, a um, fine Member of Parliament in this House uh, actually corralled me a few, about two months ago it must have been, and wanted me to meet some young people who were here and were seeing successes from the Community Max programme. And actually that member was the member who asked the question himself, um, te -te 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 level. There are a hundred young people from the Ōtaki area who were here and the light was going on for them. There was real difference being made in their lives and the positive effects from that and actually the representations from the member and his party meant that we extended the programme. Question, Mr Speaker. If cheques do exist, could the Minister explain why a community project in Apotiki received considerable funding to build what has been called, quote, an unsightly zigzagged path up Makior Mountain, sacred to Ngāti Rua Hapu, with no authorisation from the Hapu, no authorisation from the landowner, who was forced to take out trespass notices to stop the project. The um, Mr Bennett. Speaker, uh, to put that one in perspective, we're talking four young people and a supervisor, so it's, uh, I think, the, the uh, sort of significant and extra funding that you're doing. I'm not going to get involved in local politics in a small area like that and actually make a judgment call on who did or who didn't. What I will say, though, is for that particular programme, it has finished, so it's completed, it's gone for six months, and all four Four of those young people are in work. The Honourable Annette Mr. King. Mr. Speaker. In light of that answer, what has been her response to Nati Rua, who wrote to her on the 8th of July, and as of two days ago, she hadn't responded to them? So they set out their concerns to her, including asking for accountability for the damage done, including the illegal removal of flora and fauna, the remains of an unsightly path, desecration of a sacred site, and showing total lack of respect for Hapu and the community in that area. Has she responded and does she intend to? Yeah, uh, Mr Bennett. Speaker, that letter was um, received in my office on Monday, this, uh, the Monday that's just been. Um, I am advised that the department met with the parties involved yesterday and actually it's been resolved and that they all feel that they've got a satisfactory oh. outcome. And actually they're all pretty excited that four young people that didn't have opportunities are now in work and are moving ahead. And that's the advice I've been given. Question 